Holy and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and meditations of each one of our hearts be holy and pleasing to you. That in your word for us this day, we would continue to grow more in your love and grace. That we would continue to hear your calling laid forth upon us. That we would continue to live into the mission and vision of this, your church community, entrusted to us. Lord, that it is in this word that you offer to us. We gain strength, knowledge, and wisdom to go forth into the world. Amen. 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 So, last week, uh, we began this series, uh, and we began uh, the, the, we began this series Beyond the Walls, right? Church for 21st Century Christians, identifying who we are as the church, right? I mentioned that we're seeking to take 21st century problems, or, or more so not problems, they're not necessarily inherently bad things all the time, but 21st century realities. And looking to find 21st century solutions, 21st century ways, 21st century actions to be the church. Right? To recognize how our current view of society and the church can be navigated by adopting this present mindset. Our goal is to reflect on how we can faithfully live into the essence of the church as we go about our modern lives. And as we consider our role here this day... It's important to understand who we are, where we come from, and what that calling is. Right? This doesn't, this doesn't mean abandoning everything that we've done, right? Rather, we discern which practices continue to serve us in our contemporary context, and even finding new creative ways that we can connect the church to the world. And as we look at this, as we look towards finding these actions, these uh, whatever we want to call them, these practices that fit where we are today, we have to begin by thinking, what does it mean to practice church? And you see, throughout the history of the church, whether it's the global church, whether it is the United Methodist Church, the Virginia Conference, or even Beach Grove United Methodist Church, this question has been asked. How do we practice church? What does it mean for us to practice church? Whether we reflect on what helps define our relationship with the world, what are our priorities in ministry? What is our style, our identity, our brand, those key identifiers that people are going to see within us, people who are not yet a part of this community? What will they see within us? And you see, I see that there's two challenges in doing this. Right? Sometimes we try to define the church too broadly. Right? We try and define the church completely within the essence of the biblical tradition. Or we swing the pendulum too far the other way and begin to define the church too much in our cultural context. Leading us to miss the mark of how we relate to one another, how we relate to the world, and even more importantly, how we relate to God. And the task before us is to take the essence of who we are called to be as a church from the spirit of God and connect that with the contemporary culture that exists around us. And see, this is not new for any of us. Right? I invite you to read the book of Acts. The book of Acts is all about adapting the essence of of who Peter called the church to be an ass to. To the cultural context of the people. Read Paul's letters. Paul is calling these churches to adapt to the context without losing the essence that makes them the church. We are called to embody the essence. Make it a living, breathing reality in the world, right? For Jesus, his disciples, those in the biblical world, they, the way they practice community, the community that was around them, the world that was around them is vastly different than the world today. 
right? We reside in a completely different geographic region of the earth. 2,000 years removed, we have a more advanced societal understanding of ethics. I don't think Jesus was preaching from an iPad, friends. <laughs> technological capabilities that no one could have even fathomed in the biblical world. The church is about taking the essence of who we are called to be, the essence of what the church is meant to be, and adapting it to the world that is around us. We do not conform to the world. Rather, we transform the world. Because we live into that nature of the church. However, in doing that, there are things that we have to admit about how we can be in relationship with people. And so we look. That's what we're going to look at over the next uh, something number of weeks. But today I want us to begin with that essence. Because to begin with that essence helps us to understand that nature that we can and should be living out who we are as the people of God. Right, and this brings us to our scripture today, probably a passage that many of us are familiar with. Right, an almost poetic introduction to the life and nature of Christ. And John's poetic introduction here to this gospel, it invites us to see beyond Christ's human nature. Right in the early church, in these early times of the church, they were, they were getting nitty-gritty with all of these theological concepts of what it meant and looking at this nature of Christ being fully human and fully divine. And, and one of the places they looked to reiterate this point was right here at the beginning of John's gospel. Because it helps us to understand Christ's nature among us and offers a vision Not just for who Christ was for the world, but now in Christ's death and resurrection and the coming of the Spirit, who we are now called to be as the church. Because if we are to consider, if we consider the church as part of the body of Christ, then the church is called to live in the same nature of who Christ is, right? John writes, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Right? Jesus, the Word. This is the Word that we often look for from God. When we pray for God's Word to dwell among us, we are praying for the Spirit of Christ to be with us. When we talk about the Word in church, we talk about that Spirit of Christ. Why? Because we talk about this theological understanding called the Incarnation. The Incarnation, the embodiment of God in the world through Jesus Christ. Right, this term incarnation, it literally means the embodiment of a deity, spirit, or abstract quality in the flesh. And so when we talk about the incarnation of God, we talk about the incarnation of God in the flesh, in the body of Jesus Christ. And that's what John is trying to get us to consider here. That Jesus is the very essence, the very nature, the very spirit, the very being of God in flesh for us. So what does this mean for us today as the church? How do we as the church then embody God in the world? John spends the first part of this gospel, these first 14 verses, helping readers understand this true nature, understanding the physical nature of Christ. Right, We as Christians, we not only believe that Christ was, was God, was this great divine figure, but Christ was a real person who existed on the face of this earth. And we ask ourselves who he was for the world, who he was for the people of his time, and what he, can, what he continues to mean for each and every one of us today. And so then we as the church are wrestling. If we are meant to reflect Christ to the world, then how are we embodying God through the way that we live as the church? Right? What is the physicality of the church? What is the incarnation? How does the church live into this context? 
At annual conference this year, I heard just an, an amazing metaphor that I just cannot get out of my mind. I keep on thinking about it and discerning about it. You get those two by fours from God where it's like, hey, kid, pay attention. Stop being dumb. Listen to this. So look at those illustrations on your sermon notes real quick, right? And I made this easier for you. I'll imagine two cliffs facing each other. Right on one cliff stands the church, the church building, all of its members. And on the other cliff are the people we are called to reach. And so the question before us is how do we as the church build relationships with the people on the other side? How do we minister to them, witness to them? How do we connect with them? Now, our initial, often initial instinct is to pray and wait. Hope that something happens. Hope that by some magic, the people on the other side will find a way across the chasm. Now, if we're getting creative as the church, we will invest resources to build a bridge. To make it easier for them to be on the other side to come to us. Now, if we're getting even more creative, we may go and engage with the community and then bring them back to the church with us. What's the theme of those three models? We're constantly trying to think about how we get the people from one stop, from one cliff, back to our cliff. We just want them over here. But you see, when we look at John 1, when we look at the way that John describes the incarnation of Jesus, because this is, this is, John's, this is John's, the beginning of John's birth narrative. This is how John begins to talk about Jesus Christ. This is the language that we see woven in and out of John's gospel, an incarnational understanding of ministry that is grounded in the life of Christ. It invites us to not just think about how we bring people to the church, <clears throat> but also how we bring the church to the people. Right, look at that second image. Right, there is no arrow that's pointing back to the church. The arrow is pointing towards the people, and there is another church, a new church, an incarnation of the church that is now out in the community. Right? We don't just build the bridge. We go over it. We cross over it ourselves and take the presence and experience of the church to the other side where it can be seen, felt, and understood by the people we are called to serve. Isn't that what Christ did? Right? Christ came down to earth, lived and dwelt among us, did ministry, served the poor and the needy and the oppressed, created relationships. If we are to be a part of the incarnational church, we have to be willing not only to build the bridge, but to cross it ourselves. Right? We, we come back to seek sanctuary. That's why we call this the sanctuary. We come back to be renewed, revitalized. That's part of our connection to the church. But also, we're called to go and create new connections, to bring the church to the people wherever they are, to form these new expressions of what it means to be church. Right? We see an invitation here in the gospel lesson today to go and do likewise, to live as Christ lived, to take the incarnation, the physical embodiment of God through Jesus Christ, and to ourselves as a calling to be the church, to be the physical embodiment of Christ, and to be the physical embodiment of the church in the world, the hands and feet of Christ, the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. We are called to take that with us, to go and to plant the seeds in the world. And in doing so, we learn that the building is not the church. The people are the church. And wherever the people go, there the church is also. Amen. And even when we look historically at the church, we see this lived out. When we, look in the, when we look in the epistle lessons, and even when we look at our own church history, 
We see a church that has continued to adapt and continued to ask the questions of what it means to be the incarnate body of Christ. For a long time, that meant that our physical buildings were a physical embodiment of the church, right? Town council meetings, community gatherings, special events, they all happened in this building. Well, maybe this building. How long has this been here, right? When this... When this, was the, when this was sort of the center of this village, people gathered here because this was where they could gather. And this is where I say that today's realities require 21st century solutions and actions. Because people are scattered they're no longer gravitating towards the physical building of the church. And yet we are called to be the church nonetheless. Even when people gathered in the building, it was never the building that was the church. It was still the people. And the way the people within those walls connected with the people in the community. And now even more so than ever, as we see people leaving the church, or just not coming to begin with. We think about the new places of gatherings. The new places where people are called to be. We are called to be the church where God already is. Because to limit our understanding of God to one place and one space, it limits this idea of the incarnation. It limits the work that God can do through each and every one of us. We've learned that these realities require modern actions. Because in the face of a society that is not coming to us, that is not locating themselves here, we are called to go and locate ourselves with them. Now more than ever, that chasm between the church building and the people is ever, is so wide, so much wider than it has ever been. But that does not mean that we cannot still be the church that God called us to be. We are called to take that reflection of Christ in us, in our actions and in our presence, and embody the spirit of the church in the world to create relationships. And I love this because, again, like this prologue in the Gospel of John is just so juicy. Like there's so much here. I could go on for another six days about it. I promise I'm wrapping myself up. I promise. I promise. But let's look at that middle section, right? Let's look at that middle section where the gospel writer is talking about John the Baptist, right? He describes the nature of Christ. He defines Christ as the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. In the beginning, the Word was with God. In the beginning, he helped in creation. And then we kind of move on and we move away from Jesus and to this random guy named John the Baptist, now, it might not seem random to us because, you know, a lot of us have heard that Christmas story over and over again, right? At least the four years I've been here, I have preached at least one sermon every Advent on John the Baptist. And his clothes of camel hair and eating locusts, his nice fine diet. But let's look at John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist serves as a model, right? He knew his role. He knew his role was to prepare the way for the one that was coming before him. And what was Jesus going to do? Jesus was going to walk the Galilean countryside. Jesus was going to go and minister in different towns. And so what does John do? We hear John goes into the wilderness. Now, we cannot strictly define the wilderness, but John goes out to the people. He preaches in the wilderness. He baptizes at the Jordan, calling people to repentance, Right? He does all of these things not in the traditional religious structure of the day that made people come to the temple or the synagogue. John was out in the world teaching and preaching to everyday people. John was taking the word that already was and yet, and that already was and was not yet. So, right, Jesus was in the beginning and yet Jesus hadn't been born yet, right? We're on that page. And he met people physically, spiritually, emotionally, where they were. And as the 21st century church, we are called to embody this same presence of Christ. This means being present in our communities, in spaces where people gather, in places where they live, work, and play. 
It means engaging with people in their daily lives and not just expecting them to come to us all the time. It means reclaiming this incarnational essence of our calling. The church has always been the people. Right throughout the the centuries, throughout the millennia of the church, that has meant different things in different eras. And here's the thing is, is the church has always shown its ability to adapt. I mean, there's been some scuffles along the way. Welcome to United Methodism. (laughs) But it exists wherever the people of God are. Right? We gather together as the church. In our relationships, we define this as an experience of community. Right? This is our incarnation. This is our understanding of worship. We are called to take this and become our own sources of the incarnation, our own points of living out. We are called to be the hands and feet of Christ, just as John 1, 14 says, and the word of God became flesh and lived among us. Right? It doesn't say the word became flesh and it just dwelt in the temple 24-7. It doesn't say that the word became flesh and it just became a standard old rabbi. It doesn't say that the word became flesh and it did the way the thing, it did things the way they'd always been done. It says the word became flesh and what did it do? Dwell among us. Lived among us, dwelled among us. Jesus got his hands and feet dirty. And just as Christ came into the world and lived among us, we are called to dwell among the people in our communities. We are called to bring that light, to bring that hope, to bring that love, that joy, that sense of peace. And so we establish this essence of what it means to be the church. Right? This essence is going to guide us all wherever we go. As we journey this journey of what it means to be the church in the 21st century, we hold on to this essence. That the church, the church was never meant to be anything more than the incarnated presence of God, of Jesus, for the people of the world. We are called to take God's spirits, to be a tangible expression of who God is. We commit ourselves to being the church in the fullest sense of this essence. To be a community that embodies this incarnational nature of Christ. Going out into the world and making a difference in the lives of those whom we encounter. Right? May we take up this challenge to be the church in the 21st century. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable because a lot of us have done things the same way for a long time, but it also doesn't. It can be simple. We're going to get to how it can be simple in future weeks, but it can be simple as living the life that you are already living, gathering in community with those communities you are already gathering, being with those people you are already with, doing the things that you are already doing, and keeping in mind that wherever you go, wherever you are, whoever you are speaking to, you are the church. You are are the church. Amen.